Okay. Let's get high. When fame comes in one electric moment, it is blessing and curse. The sudden attention of the world, followed by clouds of one-hit wonder, flash in the pan. In the case of Richie Havens, it wasn't even one hit. It was one set. The guy who opened Woodstock. Hey, look yonder, tell me what's that you see? Marching to the fields of Concord. Looks like handsome Johnny with his flint lock in his hand, marching to the Concord War. But Havens never let those clouds become a shroud. He welcomed the moment, basked in its idealistic light. His memoir opens with Woodstock. Even its title, They Can't Hide Us Anymore, was his first reaction to seeing the vast audience. When he died in 2013, his ashes were scattered over the festival site. He didn't dig away that set. That's really where it's really at. In 1941, Havens was born in Brooklyn's Bedford-Stuyvesant to a West Indian mother and Blackfoot Indian father whose own father had come east with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. As a child, he watched his neighborhood change from a diverse, friendly community into a dangerous slum. Street corners were crowded with street gang toughs singing doo-wop, and Havens' knack for harmonies kept him safe. Dangling thick, can't see the right road. His own group was good enough to win three amateur nights at Harlem's Apollo Theater and a record deal nixed by the bass singer's minister father who called doo-wop the devil's music. In 1959, Havens took doo-woppers to busk in Greenwich Village, earning $400. It would have been more if the helpful guys passing the hat hadn't run off with the hat. Kiss him quick, he has the part. He moved to the village as a portrait artist, making up to 300 a day while folk singers were lucky to get 15 a night. But he was drawn to folk music. He said, I would hear the under history of a people that revealed a universal truth about a land or time or group of people who resembled our neighbors. But Haven's Village was also the juggler who looked like Jesus, ex-boxer Big Brown who stared at the sky till crowds gathered, then shouted, get up off my earth. Chess hustlers, yo-yo champs, curiosity shops, old record stores, and outdoor cafes where you could spend a whole day discussing a single weird idea. To a young man who saw the world as his university, it was heaven. But music kept calling. When he sang while drawing portraits, business picked up. When he sang along in an audience, songwriter Fred Neal handed him a guitar and said, take this home, learn how to play it, and come back. Haven's unique style, open-tuned chords driven by powerful percussive strums, was pure self-invention. He was soon part of the parade of Greenwich Village regulars, but nothing seemed to push him above the pack until 1965, when manager Jack Solomon printed up buttons saying, what is a Richie Havens? It was the era for buttons, and hipsters wore them, whether or not they knew the answer. Solomon then rented out the smaller Carnegie Hall space for Haven's first ever solo concert, which sold out. He never knew why. Maybe it was the buttons. He was soon recording for Verve, touring with Nina Simone, who inspired him to make songs his own. His reinventions of familiar songs like Bob Dylan's Just Like a Woman, The Fug's Morning Morning, and George Harrison's Here Comes the Sun became anthems for his generation, distinct from the originals as if entirely separate songs. Here comes the sun, I say, it's all right. He converted actor Louis Gossett's anti-war song, Handsome Johnny, into a broader humanist plea. The Tonight Show audience applauded so long, Johnny Carson invited him back the following night. Hey, look yonder, tell me what you see. Marching to the fields of Vietnam. Looks like handsome Johnny with an M-15. Marching to the Vietnam War. We apologize for the uh, 
noise of the choppity choppity, but uh, it seems there are a few cars blocking the road. In 1969, Havens was scheduled to go on fifth at Woodstock, but scheduled bands couldn't get through the traffic, and a half million people were getting antsy. Producer Michael Lang begged him to go on first, just for 20 minutes. Haven's first reaction to history was, geez, Michael, not me. It really worked out nice, didn't it? After 40 minutes, bands still weren't there, and he was pushed back for more, again and again, strumming himself off stage only to be pushed back. Turn the guitar off, Mike, please. After nearly three hours, guitar, Havens Mike. ran out of songs. Strumming the chords to a slave spiritual, motherless child, he made this song up in front of 500,000. Freedom, 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 freedom. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Alone. To many, it remains Woodstock's defining moment, an impassioned requiem for the peace and love decade. He was instantly a superstar, his next album selling millions. Everything now was a footnote to Woodstock, locking him in time like a statue on a quiet battlefield. Mr. Richie Haven. But being the eternal hippie liberated him to do anything, pioneer new digital technologies to empower artists, co-found the Northwinds Underseas Institute and Natural Guard to invite children to champion the environment. His song Shalom Salam Aleichem, written to honor the 1978 Egypt-Israeli peace agreement, became that rarest of topical songs, embraced by both sides. Havens never betrayed his electric moment, never refused to tell everybody's favorite Woodstock story. To be the spirit we needed him to be, the ghost of Woodstock past, troubadour of our best hopes, singing out for justice, peace, and freedom, freedom, oh freedom. Freedom no more must war destroy this holy land.